Live to RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills, here's Coach Campy and the voice of the Golden Grizzlies, Neil Moore. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. My name is Neil Rule. He is the coach, Greg Campy. And so, here. you got a full tank of gas, you're ready to go, right? You're all gassed up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all yeah, I'm all gassed up. Yeah. All gas, no brakes. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm here. All right, good to, good to see Cam. A uh, little bit of house cleaning first. Uh, in your absence last week, the, the kind fans of the Greg Campy Show put a collection together. Uh, and they charged me with this is a labeled gas money for you. Uh, I believe there's about six dollars in here, so that is for you. And uh, you know, we just want to make sure you can make it to your show. So, yeah, a lot of change. Yeah, there is a lot of change. Yeah, I appreciate that from everyone. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm here. And you're here. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get in to it. Tons to talk about here. Uh, certainly coming off a very very big win at Wright State over the Raiders in, in camp, like. Getting the win is one thing, but for me, it was the style in which that you guys did it. You led pretty much the entire time, and you were able to close it out. Yeah, it was. It was, and I told them in the locker room after the game that was in in the Trey Townsend, Blake Lampman era. I think that's the best win we've ever had. And you would say, how? Why is that? And it was circumstantial. Um, you know, you were around the group uh, Thursday night at Northern Kentucky it was one of the most devastating losses we've had. Um, you know, we're in first place. We won nine out of ten. We've we've got the ball up four with a minute thirty to go in a place that, you know, not many people go in and win and, and we miss a shot and then we make a I don't know what happened. A very smart player made a really bad decision to, and it was a flight. I mean, not flagrant, yeah, that's word. that's the terminology today. It was just an intentional foul. Yep too hard of a foul and it was the right call and it turned into a four point play to tie it. We miss a point blank shot uh, with what, 23 seconds to go. I really, I blame myself on that one. I, once I saw him get the rebound, I should have yelled for a timeout, which wouldn't have changed it because they didn't score and it went to overtime, but it would have assured us the last shot of the, of the game if I did that. And, and then maybe it might've been off a play where, you know, we might've had one or two options, but, I mean, you give a first team, maybe player of the year in this league, a point blank. It was contested, but a point blank shot. I mean, I, I just, I kind of just said, no, we'll take the two point lead and make sure they don't make a three and rolled around and didn't go in. And, uh, you know, as a fan base, we bitch and moan about, you know, and as coaches, you run plays and you get shots to win games and they don't go in. I, I saw an unbelievable stat today. I sent it to Smitty in a text. Kentucky, who is what, maybe the all-time winningest program in the history of college basketball, has had 27 shots since 2020 to tie or win a game in the last second, and they've only made it once. And I, I, looked, at that, I looked at that stat, and I couldn't believe it, you know, because you think about over the last three or four years, I mean, Xavier Hill Mays uh, had probably 10 shots in his career to tie or win a game. And, and I think only one went in and, you know, you oh, come on, you know, it's just a hard thing to do to make a shot like that. A lot of time luck's involved. And, you know, you think of what Goki did at, at Missouri, uh, Milwaukee, Milwaukee yeah. you know, to tie the game in overtime, to tie the game in regulation and then make the shot in, in the second overtime. It's kind of crazy that we had player do that. When you look at the statistics show that they usually don't go in. And uh, Trey shot just didn't go in. And and we also, you know, we, we didn't have a great shooting night there. But defensively, we did everything we wanted to do. And they made, they probably made 13 tough twos. Now probably, I know, they made 13 tough twos. And if you say draw up, okay, these are the shots we want them to take. Yeah. And they made them. They got going and they were in a, their backs were to the walls as far as making the top four. If we go in there and beat them, they were going to be in a really bad situation. They're still not in a tough situation to make the top four. And they did what they had to do, and that's what great programs do. And so it was a devastating loss for us. And, uh, and then you're going, you know, you're going from the fire to the, or the frying pan to the fire, whatever that statement is. That you got to go play at, you know, Wright State in the last six, seven years has been the, you know, those two schools have been the kind of the cowbells of the league. And, you know, we, we like to think we're up there with them, but 
you know, over time, we probably are over amount of wins and amount of where you finish, but they've won more, you know, we haven't been to the NCAA tournament in a while. They've been to two and uh, Northern Kentucky has been to three. So those are the two teams that you're, you know, you're fighting with and you got to go play there and to come back and win and to win the way we did, you know, Wright State is from an offensive standpoint, remind me a lot of, you know, us when Keith Benson and uh, Bader and Reggie Hamilton were here, that we were going to outscore people, you know, even though we did defend well, we wanted to play fast and score hundred points. And that's what they've done this year. They're averaging high eighties. They lead the country in field goal percentage. We showed our team before the game, the top three field goal percent in our league, the top three players field goal percent wise in our league, all play for Wright State. Yeah. And, and I mean, you, you never, I've never seen that before in all the years I've done this and to go in there and to hold them in their building, the 33%, 20-some from the three and 60 points it was just an unbelievable. And if you listen to them in their post game, they can't believe they missed shots and they did things. But I think the reason it happened was, you know, sure, they're going to have some games the ball don't go, doesn't go in, but we controlled the tempo. And I think DQ, who's going to be here tonight to talk, and uh, Blake and Tone Hunter, the three of them that had the ball in their hands for the you know the 40 minutes that we were out there controlled the tempo. We only one or two times did we get out of sorts and fire a quick three or you know Goki got a steal late in the first half and, and tried to take off with it and that ended up being a turnover to a basket for them. But for the most part, we never allowed them to get that flow and to get the game going fast and and that's why they scored 60 points. Sure, they missed shots, but. It's a lot easier to make shots in a flow than it is when everyone's a grind. And sure, they got some good looks that they missed, but they had to grind to get them. And that's why we were able to do it. To do that coming off the loss where you're sitting. You know, if you look at the last two years, we've been in first place the beginning of February, three straight years now. And the difference this year is our depth. And also the difference might be the maturity of our team, though how old we are and how many years these, you know, Trey's been here and Blake's been here and Chris has been here and handling adversity better than we did, you know, in the past. And that, it, it's a tremendous win for us. And it, it puts us in a position. I mean, we win our last, we win our last five games. We're probably going to win the league. Uh, you know, Green Bay, the, if their fans are listening, they're saying, Hey, wait a minute, what are you saying? You know, but if you look at the schedule, I mean, they've got, They've got to play the top of the league while we're playing the bottom of the league. And, uh, you know, we've already gone through the top of the league and, and have done quite well against it. And so it still might come down to tiebreakers, which we've talked about for all season long. And uh, that's why we want Youngstown to win games because, you know, we got the tiebreaker with them in Milwaukee. We want those two teams to win. So when you're looking at it and trying to decide who you want to win, you want Milwaukee and, and Youngstown to win because we hold tiebreakers with both those teams. Greg Campy Show brought to you by Henry Ford Sports Medicine, the official team physicians for Oak University and you. For more info, visit henryford.com backslash athlete. Is that the longest you've gone without saying a word in the show? No, no, not, <laughs> not even close with you, Cam. Yeah, not even close. I don't know. I saw you starting to twitch. I, you know. No, not, I was just watching TV, Cam. You know, yeah. I just all I do is bring you back and forth to commercials. That's there we it. Go. I, was told, I was told you struggle with that. It was yeah. in my absence. Yeah, I was um, really bad at that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, as uh, Coach Campy said, DQ Cole will join us coming up in just a little bit. And don't forget, too, you can get involved with the show. Just send us a tweet with the hashtag Ask Campy attached to it, and uh, we will ask Campy. It's funny how that works. The questions are getting lined up right now, as a matter of fact. But Camp, I mean, just just going back to that right state game, the thing that that I really, I guess I shouldn't have been surprised by it in retrospect, but just how tough you guys were in terms of, of dictating what you wanted to do to them. They were kind of powerless to style. You have 46 points in the paint. We were talking about it really all broadcast long. I mean, you guys really imposed your will in the paint and were able to have a lot of success. And, and I give my staff and our players a ton of credit for that because we had a one game, one game prep, or excuse me, a one day prep for the game. And again, the, the mood was not good after, after Thursday night and, they went about their business. They, they did their job, you know, and they, and they understood at halftime, 
we held them to 24 points, I believe, and we had scored 26 in the paint. So we had actually outscored them. You know, we got the ball into the basket, and Chris, who's playing, in case you didn't realize this, Chris Conway, uh, how he's changed and grown, and you talk about toughness, played in that game. He broke his thumb Thursday night at, at, uh, at Northern Kentucky. Now, it's not a fracture. It's a, a – Forget how they what they call it. We need the folks from Henry Ford to explain. Yeah, non displaced, non displaced broken thumb is what I was okay. told, which means you know they can tape it up and but that's not a shooting hand. And he came out and made some baskets early, and as the game went on, you could see it was starting to bother him. And and thank God Baru played so well. Um, but the toughness that we showed in in DQ, you know, I'm not saying this because he's here tonight. That he was by far the toughest guy in the court and. You know, we ran a play to him. We thought that we could get to the rim on them, and he had, especially him in this game. So we ran a play to him to start the game to get to the rim, and he got there and he missed it, point blank layup. You know, a lot of guys would have hung their head. He went and got the rebound and scored. You know, and, and that just kind of how the game went. He just, we were. It's not often, you know. You think back to the days of Loudon Love and, and Cole Gentry and, and the Billy Wander and those guys that. Right, states had over the last six, seven years, and you know we've lost some tough games to them, and we always walked away saying they out-toughed us. And uh, I think they walked away the other night thinking that Oakland out-toughed them, and, and, and that's why we won the game. Absolutely, uh, Camp. And just to kind of wrap up the road trip, you, you talked about it as well. The the overtime loss at Northern Kentucky. I just kind of my impression on that one. That was another game. Yes, you guys fell in overtime, but that was a game that you guys had the majority of the of the control in. And throughout throughout the Horizon League season, Cam, I, I felt that way pretty much every Horizon League game that you guys have played, where where you have had control the majority of it at a lot of the time. Now, sometimes a snowball gets rolling downhill if you're on the road or whatever, and, and that can be tough to deal with. Um, but at the same time, as a whole, Cam. You have to be happy with the way this squad is playing right now because because the game does go through you guys for large parts. Well, we won 10 of our last 12, so I think obviously i I got to be happy with that. We uh, we had a heck of a preseason, too, against one of the toughest schedules in the country. I mean, we're sitting here with 16 wins, you know, with five games still to go, and I think the eighth-ranked schedule in the country. So, yeah, I mean, it's been a hell of a season, but we've had hell of a season before that have crashed at the end, and that's we feel good about this team. No, I really do. I think that they understand it, and what they did Saturday is proof of that. So, no, I hate that we lost at Northern Kentucky, just like they do. And um, you got a six, you know, got four point lead with the ball with a minute and thirty to go. You got to win those games on the road if you're going to win championships, and we did, and it, we didn't allow it to become a losing streak. And I do think you're forgetting when you say we've controlled most league games, you're forgetting the Fort Wayne game in our place. I said, that's why I said most. I okay. say all. I looked at the film again of that. We were down 30 at one point at home, which you don't see very often. Um, so, you know, Wednesday's a huge, huge game for us. I know we'll talk about that later. But, um, you know, we've got we've got to prove something Wednesday. And if we do, then I'll feel – then I'll talk more about top four and winning it. Uh, it's perfect, too, that we got DQ goal coming up in just a couple of minutes. And, and you and I have discussed this in the past, Cam, but, but there's options for you now uh, in, in terms of scoring the pass. I'm talking about, like, scoring the ball. DQ, DQ Cole scored the ball Saturday against Wright State. And, and you have a plethora, really, of, of options that can really score the basketball. You know, what, what I liked the most about DQ on Saturday was he was one for eight from the three on Thursday. And a lot of times – especially him because he's kind of acquiesced to our older players this year, and we don't want him to do that. We want him to be a scoring threat. I want him when he has the ball to think score and, uh, you know, to come out after that game of one for eight. A lot of guys would have, you know, oh, I'll let Golke shoot it. I'll let Blake shoot it. One of the reasons we ran plays to him early was to try and get him going. And like I said, he missed a shot and was, had to wherewithal to get the rebound and score, and then he scored again. You know, he, he was quite the player for us on, on Saturday. But we expect that from him now. You know, we, we need that from him. Not just expect it, we need it. All right, well, we will take our first break. When we come back, I'll be joined by DQ Cole. Don't forget, get your questions in on Twitter with the hashtag AskCampy. We will get to those as well. It's a Greg Campy show live from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills.
cool stuff I want to get to with DQ. I've been looking forward to this conversation once I told DQ was was slide through the show here tonight. But DQ, uh, I was on the bus, obviously, on the way home. I was going to ask you how you're doing, but that bus ride home, everybody was doing fine, weren't they? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> everybody was great. Yeah, uh, you guys, you guys were uh, excited. I'll just say it like that. Uh, but DQ, uh, like I said, a ton of stuff I want to get to. But I guess we'll jump in because the fans here are going to riot if I don't ask you about this. They'll start throwing chairs and everything. Everybody wants to know, what is the difference between yellow shoe DQ Cole and blue shoe DQ Cole? Uh, I wouldn't say there's really a difference. Uh, always throughout my basketball career, always wanted to wear the brightest shoes. Always had the brightest shoes on the court. So that was one of my superstitions. So when Colin ordered our shoes, I told him I wanted bright shoes. And then I got them bright. So then I thought about mismatching them. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I'll just wear one pair in the first half, one pair in the second half. And it just turns out that sometimes the second half is always better than the first half. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was intentional by you then, to, to actually change shoes. Because people talked about it. We got to the first media time out of the second half. I'm getting tapped on my back. Like, you know, did you see he changed his shoes? I told you. Like, the gold shoes are better. Did you say something to him? <laughs> so, so that was something you meant to do then. Yeah, definitely. That was, that was something I just just a beat there for sure. All right. Is, is that acceptable to everybody? Okay. okay. Yeah, they, they dig it. All right. There we go. So, all right. We got that. Um, I, I do want to get into you, your game, your fit with this basketball team. When, when you hear Coach Campy uh, talk about that, you know, this is a team right now that, that's playing for Horizon League Championship. And, uh, you know, you, you transfer here. Uh, we'll get in. I want to talk about your time in Pontiac, too, Pontiac High School and, and all of that. When you hear Coach Campy say that, where, you know, sometimes, and I've seen it in games, I've seen it in practice, he'll get on you if you pass up a shot. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. definitely. How, how, does that, how does that make you feel as a guy that's coming in here? Uh, you've got it all figured out now, obviously, but but how does that make you feel when Camp says that to you? Uh, honestly, it just gives me all the confidence in the world to just keep going and just believe in myself as much as he does, as much as everybody on the team and the coaching staff does to score the ball. And that's what I'm good at. So he's been on me since day one about that. So I've just been trying to make sure I score as many as I can, shoot the ball as well as I can, and help the team in any way possible. The Greg Camp Show here live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills, brought to you by the Pino Insurance Agency, LLC, of Mimic Insurance. They cater to the educational market. If you're looking for affordable insurance and a knowledgeable insurance agency, go online to pinoinsurance.com today. That's P-I-N-O insurance. Dot com today can confirm by the way uh, with Mimic Insurance uh, as the husband spouse is a teacher so I certainly can confirm that uh, DQ the way you rebound the basketball that that's the thing that that I'm always struck by uh, you you rebound the basketball with the hunger that you don't see from the guard spot uh, certainly in the Horizon League I mean you don't see a, a ton in, in college basketball but from the guard spot it's nothing for you to get double digit rebounds in a game where does that come from man? Uh, just then back in Pontiac, it was like we didn't have like when I was I was at parks and stuff like that. I didn't know I wasn't always playing AAU basketball. I was at the park. I grew up in this area, Arbor Hills area. I've been every gym around here, so it was just like I'm always playing at the park. I really didn't have a lot of guys to play with, so it was just more. I had to get my rebound on my own or. It's just only four or five of us, so we, we're not playing a full game. Or, You're just playing 21 or whatever? Just playing 21s, yeah. you know, and you got to get it on your own. There's no, there's nobody out there to rebound for you, or we didn't have a gun to shoot the ball throws back to us. It was just us, so we had to figure it out, and I had to make sure that I could rebound at a high level, even though I was always playing the big man. I had to make sure I could rebound with the bigger, the bigger guys on higher levels around. How do you do that? Just, you just got to be a dog. Just that's it. <laughs> you know. That's DQ Cole on life, everybody. Right, right there. There's some, there's some life wisdom for you. Uh, DQ, I want to, I want to tell everybody out there. So I've talked about it on the broadcast before, but, but you playing at Pontiac High School, and uh, my guy Gordy Lindsay got me onto this one, and, and it's very interesting. So I made it a point to kind of talk about it during games. So, so playing at Pontiac High School, you were originally a post player. So, yeah. so you were a big yeah. originally. Um, I believe you guys went one year. You, you were playing in the post. I think you guys went three and eighteen that year. Yeah. Uh, they moved you to the point guard. Yeah. You guys go twenty three and three the next year, where you go to the regionals, where you lost to Romeo Weems and that, that New Haven school and, and, and all that over there. I, just, 
that in and of itself, um, the the way you were able to transform the four of that team, is is that where I don't want to say where you learn to like score the basketball, but the mentality of a score. It's it's different to be to be a post player and score the ball, but when you're a guard, you have the ball, so yeah. you're able to dictate. Definitely. Um, at Pontiac, I was I would say I was always the I had the most IQ on the team. So like I could get everybody where they needed to be, and make, we could all we always had good flow. We always had good chemistry out there, and it just made me want to be. I wanted to win. I didn't want to keep losing. We were losing. I was I wasn't in good shape myself. I was maybe all close to two hundred, just fat. I wasn't I wasn't working out as well as I should have been. And then in the summer of my senior year, Gord, I got with Gordy, and he just pushed me he just pushed me to my limit and then by the time I started my senior season I was able to play point guard and we were able to make a run and do good things so that was just a decision you made huh? yeah. you said all right I don't I don't like this yeah. I don't like losing definitely what does it take definitely and you paid the price definitely <laughs> talking about DQ Cole here on the Greg Campy show um says here too in your bio uh Favorite snack, a Swedish fish. Yeah. You still on that? Definitely. That's my favorite. <laughs> favorite, favorite snack for anywhere. Road trips, I'm getting them. Whenever we get off the bus, I get a chance of getting Swedish fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, DQ, you transferred from uh, Henry Ford Community College. You made 115 three-point shots last year. Uh, you were you were Juco All-American last year as well. Was it pretty much a no-brainer to come to Oakland in that? I mean, you know, like, Campbell let the Ferraris run, you know, in, in, in the street. If you know, if you had the ability to, to shoot the basketball, was that was that kind of a no brainer, or was Oakland somewhere you always wanted to be deep down? Uh, Oakland was somewhere I always wanted to be. Like I said, I grew up right across the street, Five Points Church, right across YMCA. I was always there, Real Rogers, I, Oakland Christian. I was always at all those places, just playing, just hooping, and then. Uh, I didn't really know what it took to be a Division One basketball player. I just, even out of high school, I just thought like maybe I can try back, JUCO basketball and then see where it takes me. And then once I figured out what it was like and what I, what it took, I fell in love with the grind. And then it was just, it was just, it just took off from there. And then when I got to Henry Ford, um, I just worked every day, every day, stay consistent with everything I was doing. And then. I told myself, like, before I even ever got a conversation out of Coach Campy, Coach Smitty, Coach Cub, I told myself that I was going to get an offer from Oakland and play basketball at Oakland, and it came true. So it was definitely a dream come true. So, so you're along those lines, like, with Trey and everything. Like, you love being here, period. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I love everything it, about it. I, I love it. I love it. It's all with DQ Cole here on the Greg Campy Show. So let's fast forward then. Uh, you transfer, you get here, you're here. We step out there on the court at Ohio State. First game of the year. You know, 10,000 people, however many people were there at the game. Or Illinois, it's a sold-out crowd. They're going crazy. They're nationally ranked. Did you ever look around and say, wow, man, like I've, I've made it. I'm here. Yeah, every, every, every team in the non-conference schedule, it was just, it was amazing to just be able to walk in those arenas and those facilities and see that everything and all the hard work that I've done has paid off just being able to be here and have the opportunity to step on the floor against teams like that or with teams like that and almost beat them and come close to beat them and actually beat them. So it was, it was definitely a dream come true for you know, ESPN to actually be in our ESPN. It's funny, man. Like I look on, I look on your face when you're telling that story, man. Like you, you do, you, you love this. Definitely. You, you love this. Definitely. That's Definitely. awesome. That's my life. You, uh, you know, as as you guys have won games and, and the crowds have gotten bigger, it's gotten popping in there as well. Uh, you know, just what is what does that mean to you to be in there? I mean, look, the fans that come here to Campy Show. There's not even a game here today. It's just Campy's radio. Uh, but he doesn't run out of gas, you know, like, uh, but no, when, when you get out there in the arena though, cause the arena gets popping and, and you've been everywhere in the horizon league. There's no place like the arena. Yeah, nothing like it. Uh, we're, fans are great. Tees for threes. I got every, everybody. It's great. All the, all the fans love us. Our swim team, they were crazy last week. Uh, shout out to those guys. Those guys are crazy. Uh, yeah, it's just it's a great experience. I mean, coming in there, putting on the show for those guys every night, making sure we get the dub for the for the Grizz Nation is 
definitely what we're all about. So. Well, I, I just want people to know too, like the tease for threes thing where they throw the you take that personally, yeah, right? Like okay. you, you want to get everybody in that arena t shirt before definitely. the night's over, don't you? Definitely. That's me and Jack and Blake. That's our goal. <laughs> <laughs> we run out of t shirts in this. You hear that, guys? We run out of t shirts. We gotta we gotta order some more of it. Um, DQ. You guys are in the chase right now, and, and obviously league championships and NCAA tournaments uh, are, are the dream, and that's really every you know every basketball player in college is that's their dream right now. What's it going to take for you guys to get there? Um, we got to stay consistent with our game plan. Our coaching staff is doing a great job of preparing us every game, every week. No matter how many days we got in between, we're, they give us what we need every day of practice, on and off the court to succeed. To, beat whoever we need to beat to be where we need to be when it's time. So we're just stacking hurdles and trying to make it to March and do good things in March for sure. There it is, everybody. DQ Cole, how can you not like this guy, buddy? Give it up for DQ Cole. For the local Golden Grizzly DQ, appreciate the time, my friend. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll catch up again soon, all right? Thanks for having me. All right, that is DQ Cole. We'll be back with more of the Greg Campy Show live from our Pub Pub in Rochester Hills. Welcome back to the Greg Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. He's Coach Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule, the voice of the Golden Grizzlies. Happy to have you along for the ride. And of course, the Greg Campy Show is brought to you in part by Farmer Owned Prairie Farm, celebrating 85 years of feeding American families uh it is your last opportunity here get those questions in to ask campy all you got to do just send a tweet with the hashtag ask campy on there and uh we will read them uh, before we get to that yes i heard dq and you guys talking about the shooting on those threes northern kentucky we shot 49 of them so if we got to do that at home, we'll get rid of all the shirts. So hopefully we'll make more than 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, everybody. Well, that's DQ's goal, goal. You know, he wants everybody in the Oakland University Credit Union Arena to have a, a T-shirt when they leave. Well, next time we shoot 49, let's try and make 20, 22 of them. 25 of them, maybe? Yeah. Well, our all-time record. Does anybody know what it is? No. Nobody here probably knows that. Who said that? You're exactly right. <laughs> we made 27 out of 56 against Madonna University. The day the came, university. yeah, the not she didn't play in the game. Yeah, the, the, uh, that was when we scored 189 points that day. So that, that people in the that people in the back yeah. knew 189 points exactly. Maybe maybe my worst moment ever as a coach though. Why is that? I hate to say this publicly, but it's been 15, 20 years. So I, well, it's been more than that, 30 years, so I can say it. So That sounds weird. It almost is. It almost is. We, we go and we're playing Madonna, and we played Toledo. We're Division two at the time. We played Toledo, and we go to Toledo and beat Toledo by 20-some points as a Division two team. 
and our two best players, uh, Ty McGregor and Tom Eller, get kind of hurt in the game, and we're going to play Madonna, who we knew we should probably beat. If we're going to beat a Division One team, we surely should beat Madonna, right? Especially when she wasn't playing. Right, absolutely. <laughs> so <clears throat> if we go into the game, and they had a coach who's a friend of mine. In fact, before he got that job, he was a, a radio guy for us. His name was Sharf. And he's that was in the day of Loyola, Loyola Marymount when yes. they played that style of play that I mean, if you remember they beat Michigan in the NCAA tournament. The older people will remember that. Um, so we go there and I don't play those two guys. And um, we're, we're, you know, back in those days, we scored a lot of points. We would average, you know, 93, 90 points a game. And we go there and, and we're, the, the, we're beating them badly and they're pressing us and on offense, they're shooting it off one pass. I mean, the, there had to be a, a million possessions in the game and we're sitting there and Eric Steffens, my uh, assistant looks at me at, with about six, seven minutes going first half goes, we're going to get 80 points this half. And I looked at him and no, we're not going to get 90 and we ended up getting 93. And so now the game keeps going and, and now we're ahead uh, uh, 189, I think they had ended up with 107. And at that point, nobody in the history of college basketball had scored 100 points and a half. And we had 98 with, yeah. We had 98 with 15 seconds, 12 seconds to go. And they're bringing it up. And I yelled at one of my kids, foul. <laughs> And we fouled. So we got the ball back with a chance to score 100 points, up 81 points. Not my finest moment as a coach. And God, the basketball God stepped in and we missed the shot. Yeah. We were 27 of 56 from the three in that game. And we missed the shot that would have given us 100 points. We've been the first team in history. Now, since then, teams have done it. But at that point in time, nobody had ever done that. And I, that's, I learned a great lesson that night. You, know, you, just, you don't mess with the basketball guys. All right. Well, hey, it is time for hashtag Ask Campy. Fire off a question on Twitter. Pittsburgh Marty is going to lead things off, says uh, coach a little off the usual path this week. I was looking at old Oakland University men's basketball schedules. Some real gems in there, such as scoring 189 points in a game. I, it's right there. No swear way. to God. Such as scoring 189 points in a game and 30, and 30 points in another. About that game. <laughs> and 30 oh, yeah. points in another. Other than the Michigan win, which would you consider the biggest win in your early days as a D1 program? Well, Marty asked me that question uh, when I saw him last time, what he thought our biggest win. I said, well, I'm not sure my, but beating Michigan uh, in the arena, not just beating Michigan, but doing it in the arena. Of course, they'll never come back and never will now. But, um, you know, that that to me was for Oakland University, not for me personally, but for our university at that time where we were to beat, you know, the cowbell of the universities of this state was just, a, you know, an unbelievable night and moment. Um, but if you take that game out of it, there's been a lot of great wins in that. But honestly, the, the most important win that I think – um, this university ever had was when Pierre Dukes made the shot against uh, Oral Roberts to send us to our first NCAA tournament. Um, we were a big underdog in the game. We we had not had a good season. Uh, we we've had only had eight wins. I think the least amount of wins in my 40 years is 12 or something like that. But we only had eight wins at that point. And uh, we went to the conference tournament and we swept it and beat a great team. Pierre made a shot. And I, the reason I say that is because we had no idea what was coming uh, when we made that shot to go. Got to the hotel, back in Tulsa, got to the hotel. I was up till five in the morning, every 10 minutes doing a radio show somewhere in the world, yeah. not just in the country, in the world I was doing. People, I couldn't understand what they were saying to me. And then an interpreter would tell me what, what they said. And then the coolest part about that is we flew back and there's a tremendous story. I know I don't have enough time, but we flew to Tulsa and they lost our luggage. 
So we get off the plane. We're going to play in a conference tournament. We don't have our luggage. Mm -hmm. We don't have shoes. We don't have our uniforms. We don't have anything. And we got 24 hours before we play. We, I sent whoever Adobo was at that time. I, I think it was Sarah Judd, but I don't remember exactly. No, no, she wasn't. It was 15 years. Whoever Adobo was at that time, um, we sent to a, a Foot Locker and bought shoes for everybody, which in that day killed our budget, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then we were going to wear Oral Roberts' road uniforms in our first game. We weren't playing them. And, and the luggage, they found the luggage like four hours before the game. So we at least got our uniforms back. So we get on the plane, we fly home, and we're in the, and this is before, uh, obviously, 9-11. And, and, in, and back in the old days, in the airports, you could walk your, you know, if you would take your son to the, you could walk to the terminal with him and then watch him get on the plane and, and then walk back to the car, right? So we get to come out of the terminal, terminal and it's like, you know, a law and order TV show where there's this, this group of people that are behind, you know, they're roped off and they're behind and there's TV cameras and everything. And I remember saying to the, my assistant Smitty at the time, I go, Jesus, what happened? They were all here for us. <laughs> you know, we, we walked out there and they're yelling questions and they want, and, and we were like in shock. I mean, this is, we did this work. <laughs> and so that moment where I think the world found out that Oakland University is not in California, that it's in Michigan and, and that they have this really good basketball team. I think that was the most important win that we've had uh, during my time. Yeah. So there, there's a thorough answer to your question there, Mark. A long one. Yeah, a long one. No doubt about it. Uh, Griffin Beers wants to know. I, you're gonna, I think you'll go political on this, but let's see. You'll be pol politically correct on this one. Hashtag Ask Campy. If there were a draft of Division One Oakland players, who would you pick first overall? Of all the players yep. we ever had, I don't have to be political. They can get mad at me. I'd take Keith Benson. You don't get six eleven. You know NBA draft NBA pick. draft picks. Now. I would not sit here and say if who's the best player that ever played at Oakland. I would not say that. Who's the most dominant player? We've had a lot of dominant players. But if I was going to start a team, you, you, you're going to start at 6'11", right? NBA guy, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then draft him. And then, then you, you've got Kendrick Nunn. You've got uh, Kay Felder. Um, you can go back to Mike Helms. You know, you, you, you've got – I mean, just look at the wall. Of, there aren't many schools that are considered mid-majors like we are that have five NBA players hanging on a wall in, in your building. So our fan base has been very fortunate, and I've been very fortunate as a coach to be able to coach such great, great players. And as I said earlier this, this year in the show, when Trey Townsend gets named first team all league this year, it'll be 18 consecutive years that we've had a first team all league player. And it's the second longest streak in the history of college basketball. The only school that has a longer streak is Gonzaga. That's impressive company. No doubt yeah. about that. Uh, Rob Brooks, who's in the house here tonight. Camp, it's been a while since we had a food segment. How were the Dr. Pepper baked beans? Uh, for those who paint the picture, uh, Rob here brought a can of Dr. Pepper baked beans. That's a real thing, come to find out. Yes, and Rob, I haven't opened it yet. It's sitting on the counter in my <laughs> condo, but I have not. To be honest with you, I don't think I've eaten a meal at home since then, you know, because... Get kind of busy this time of the year. We're on the road, and when we're not playing or on the road playing, I've got to go to high school games and things like that. So um, I guess I didn't think about it during the Super Bowl <laughs> yesterday. Made some nachos, but uh, I should have used them. I didn't think about it. There. But I I will try them, and I will let people know. What's going to be the play? You're going to take it straight up? You're going to mix it in with something? How, no, how are you going to I got to eat straight up. Maybe yeah. some uh, tor tortilla chips or something. Okay, some kind of delivery mechanism. Yeah, All right, yeah, I got yeah. it. Scoop it. Yeah, scoop it. Yeah, scoop it. Get the scoops out. Uh, Nick Lucido, hashtag Ask Campy. Uh, Coach, good to see you in the house today. Any thoughts on maybe switching over to an EV like Colin Shannon? I hear Chevy's got a good EV lineup. Hashtag Ask Campy. Hashtag this is not an ad. <laughs> That's a really good question, but the problem with that is, is you have to plug it in, right? Yeah. Um, I'll Instead of running out of gas one time, I'll be out of electricity a hundred times. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, you know how many times I've left my phone in my car and can't find my phone and I have to walk all the way to get out of the car? You know, I, I just, my mind thinks in different ways, so I would know for sure I wouldn't plug the car in. Right? 
we got a parking spot, right? You can put a, a charging unit there. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Okay. <laughs> just trying to give you options, well, Cam. I hope I'm still alive in, what is it, 2032 or whatever. We all have to have them. If that, I don't want to get political, but if that happens, uh, I'll have to learn. I've, I've put a thing in my phone that says charge car. Right? <laughs> uh, Gio Mosheri checks in with us. Hashtag Ask Campy. And I do like this question. Coach, how does it feel to get to RJ's when the sun is still up? That's how we know we're getting towards March, man. Yeah, that's a good point. It's kind of cold, right? And uh, they were down at the Wright State. The, yeah, the WXOU crew. I know that they were extremely happy that uh, our administration at Oakland University thought enough of them to give them a chance to go on the road. And it's great teaching and learning experience for our journalism kids and our journalism school to be able to go on the road like that and broadcast the game is really, really cool. And it was neat having them there. And they were doing, you know, videos outside the locker room. They got to experience a pretty good win. So, you know, I was that was a great learning experience and educational moment for us. Yeah, no, no doubt that I learned a lot when I was able to do that as a student, go to the conference tournament and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it certainly does uh, help you out a lot. Matt, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say I like them a lot better than I liked you at that time. I know. And probably still now, too. Somebody today was going, hey, after I met, after I was with this guy and we were talking, he goes, then I went, I, I ran into a guy named Neil Rule. He's the, like the head of our homeowners association. He goes, I didn't know he was your friend. I said, he's not my friend. He no. works at Oak. Right. We're co workers. Right. We're not co friends. That's exactly what I said. Yeah. Uh, so he lives over by me. Huh? Uh, yeah, in your home. Are you the head of a homeowners association? Uh, no, I'm the uh, secretary or whatever. Oh, well, he was giving you a lot more credit. Than <laughs> yeah. that, hey, Camp, I've learned from you, man. Like, That's you know, have everybody around you be high level and then take the credit. Right, right? exactly. <laughs> right. I've spent 40 years doing that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Hey, just because we're not friends, I mean, I don't learn from you, Camp. Uh, Matt from the Horizon Rum Table says, I asked Campy, felt like we haven't had a lot of food talk lately. Man, I guess, I guess we have. Have uh, people seen me lately? Well, that he goes on to that. I know you're getting healthy. Congratulations. But what food stops do you still look forward to? And why haven't you scheduled a home and home with Western Illinois so we can get back to Sunrise Chicken? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's the old days. Yeah, that is the old days. There's this place. I mean, if, I don't know if any of you have ever been to Macomb, Illinois. No, you haven't. Uh, I'll just answer for everybody. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, but you can see it from there, right? I mean, it is. it is, And they had this little place called Sunrise Chicken, and they had make the best chicken that you'll ever eat. It was unbelievable. I used to make sure that we'd spend the night there, which players didn't like that, but we'd spend the night there just so we could eat at that place. But, but I, I had uh, Nagy said to me, you know, I should, we haven't seen them all year, right? The first time we played them was six games to go, and I'm, Shook his hand before the game, we're talking, and he just looks at me and goes, how much weight have you lost? Are you sick? <laughs> so that's why we're not talking about food, Matt. We're trying to trying to change the lifestyle. No, absolutely. Uh, Andrew, this is a good one. And this is the last one here, uh, which is a pretty good one to write off on. Hashtag Ask Campy. Pretty sure I saw a stat where Campy currently doesn't have any technical fouls this year. This can't be right, can it? Have I? I don't think I have had one this year. I saw yesterday on Twitter that the coach at Jacksonville has 21 this year. I don't think I'd said my job if I had 21. That's, yeah, that's probably true. Have you ever, do you remember getting through a season without a technical? I don't think I've had many in the last three or four years. Huh? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you have kind of change that up a well, little bit. Well, you know, to, to the point that I know the referees so well, and I know who's going to be terrible and who isn't. So when they're <laughs> terrible, they're terrible, I guess. I, you know, that, that's, I hadn't thought about that. Oh, man, that's pretty good. But, yeah, that is today's edition of uh, Hashtag <laughs> Ask Campy on Twitter. That, that is a very, very fun segment. All right, we'll take our final break. When we come back, we'll look ahead to the week. Uh, another road trip coming up, and uh, certainly as well. What do you got, Cam? There's just talking about that. The uh, you people that were at the game, the travel, they called on Trey Townsend. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, in, right in front of our bench, right? And uh, the guy that, and this is what I'm talking about, the guy that made the call, I had him a hundred times, you know, I, I mean, I I remember, he remembers when I was fat, and I remember when he didn't have gray hair, right? And uh, so 
I wasn't too happy about that call. And then later in the game, he's standing in front of me. And I said to him, I said, Brian, that has to be the worst call you've ever made. Now, 7, 10, 15 years ago, they would have teed me for that, right? He looks at me and goes, and I made a lot of bad ones, haven't I? <laughs> what do you say to that? <laughs> you know, I just, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. The two oh, he, the two. he had me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right, we'll take our final break. We'll come back. We'll talk about the upcoming week. A game on the road. Certainly we'll be back at the OU Credit Union Arena as well. We'll be back with the finale of the Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Pub here in Rochester. <laughs> here can continue to be unbelievable standing room etc appreciate all your guys support for real thank you guys yeah the problem with that for me is that we learn that i've missed two shows and they still show up so it's not me they're coming for me i sure hope it's not you yeah. who knows i think it's the player segment yeah i think i think that's what it is and, and the season fries too yeah, absolutely sure. the season fries sure. because they're awesome up here at rj's pub make sure you get up here at some point Kemp, we have a we have a, a, a developing situation that was just brought to my attention. We were talking about refs and technicals and stuff like that. So it's just been brought to my attention uh, from Colin Shannon. On Wednesday, the game at Purdue Fort Wayne, we have a referee that we've never had in a game before. I guess his name is Kenneth Moreland. He was on The Bachelor in Bachelor in Paradise. I didn't make that up. That's real. I don't know what that is though. What is what is Bachelor in Paradise? I don't know either. I'm sure somebody here knows. I think it's one of those reality shows where they like you try to get TV a wife show? or something, right? Like they, they oh, to... you see the guy with the rose on the commercials. Yeah. Oh. That's The Bachelor. All right. That's, I don't think that's something that I would watch. Or, I, if somebody watches, that's out. That's fine. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's not something that I. <laughs> uh, so camp. That so why are we it? bringing that up? Because oh, 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 I might get the technical now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I'm getting one for sure now because you know when he makes a bad call, I'm gonna bring up the rose thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have, we're gonna have the sidelines extra mic'd up. I would say. All right, yeah. the radio broadcast. Okay, uh, we're not gonna miss that. All right, Cam. Uh, this week, uh, one of those. Uh, I, I don't want to call it a quirk in the Horizon League schedule. It's been by design. Uh, third game of a, of a three-game road swing in the schedule. Uh, at Purdue Fort Wayne on Wednesday. Certainly, we, we've talked about it a lot here on the show. We know what they did here in the OU Credit Union Arena and uh, a very, very dangerous team, certainly against his own. 
Yeah, I mean, they're they're the antithesis. Right. You got it right. Yeah. Oh, I mean, <laughs> of of what the zone is, and and we've got to guard the three. We're not going to change. We're not going to go. Oh, let's play man to man because we wouldn't be able to do it. But they're a team that when they've got it going, um, they're going to hurt us. You know, Dayton's the same way. Everybody's all upset with me after the Dayton game, but I don't know if you guys have paid any attention, but Dayton's like 20 and three and ranked 15th in the country. I mean, we got beat by a really good team that night that shot, shot it. And Fort Wayne, um, it's funny after that game, all the coaches in the league were calling me and are they really that good? And, and uh, their ceiling is that good because when they're making it, they got guys that can make it. They also have a couple guys that can get to the rim. I said, but over a course of, of, you know, 31 games, you've got to have nights where you score at the rim and, and uh, with post play and, and protect the rim. And, and they've struggled with that. And that's why they had that five game losing streak, you know, but, but he's built that team to win the conference tournament. He, had, he didn't build that team to win the regular season. He built that team to win the conference tournament. They're a very dangerous team that can for sure win the conference tournament. In fact, I think they're a favorite, uh, you know, especially if they can get a home home first game. And so it's going to be a really difficult game for us. It's it's one that scares me because of what you just said about the zone. Um, and I still say that night they played us here, December 2nd. I was wrong. By the way, it was the second, not the first. Okay. Um, that's as good a basketball game that's ever been played against Oakland in the arena. And, and we've just got to do a better job of scoring. We have to we have to control we have to do exactly the same game plan that we had against Wright State, State against them. We've got to score at the rim, we've got to play slow, we've got to slow them down, and we've got to make their shots with pressure and not let them get in a flow. And if we do that, we'll have a chance to win. It's a huge game. Uh, for those for those that saw and a lot of people talked about it, why why were they so effective with that corner three in their matchup here at the uh, OU Credit Union Arena? Well, I will say this, and this sounds like an excuse, and if they're listening, it'll make them mad, but um, it was our third game in five days. And to play that zone, you have to play with great energy. And uh, we had beaten Xavier on a Monday night, and then we had our rivalry game against Detroit on Wednesday, and then we played them on Saturday. And we didn't have a whole lot of hop in our step that day. And once the... What do you, you say? The, something gets out of the gate? The horses know. got out of the barn. Yeah. When, once that happened, you can't get them back in. And uh, it did. And again, uh, they played unbelievable and they're a really good team. But I think we had something to do with it, too. And now we're coming into a situation that it's at their building. Um, we've historically played pretty well in the, in, the, in that big building in Fort Wayne. And, and you know, back in the day, Back when we were in the Summit League and they were in the Summit League, we used to take five busloads of uh, students to because we play double headers, the women and the men. So we would take five busloads of students to those games and we would have more fans there than they did. And we always played pretty well there. So we have a history of playing well there. We need to play well there. And, uh, you know, it's a really important game. No, Camp, it, you brought up that point, too, with the zone. The, the corners of the zone, that's a want-to. That's like rebounding, right? Like, that's a want-to proposition. Like, you you, you have to go at that. You have to attack that. If, if you're tired or or whatever, it, it can't it can't happen. You, it's a want-to proposition to get out there. All right. And in, in our zone, if, if you run good offense, that's the weakness of it. That That's the area that's, it's, you know, we're trying to guard that with Chris Conway or Baru or the big, uh, um, if it's a, two pass if it's if it's one pass there no but if it's a couple passes and it's there the center's got to get there and that's if you screen and do things you can get that shot uh, you know we we believe though but if that's the only shot you're getting then we're going to beat you uh, but it, it's tough we're going to have to get to it cuz they can make it Oh, absolutely. And then on Saturday, we'd love to see everybody out at the Oakland University Credit Union Arena on Saturday, 3 o'clock. IUPUI will be in town. Uh, that'll be televised locally on TV 20 also. Uh, but Camp IUPUI uh, coming in and, and look, you know, they, they had some moments where they had success against us when we were down there. Ultimately, we had the control and, and we got the win. And that's something where you have to take care of business. They beat Fort Wayne at Fort Wayne. Yes, they did. And you can see. They beat Fort Wayne and Fort Wayne had us by 30, you know, so it, it, college basketball, you never know on a given day. It's really going to be interesting. Uh, Wednesday, they play at Detroit, you know, so 
It's, it's just going to be interesting because what happens in that game, this is, the, you know, Detroit's looking for that elusive victory and, and the odds makers will have Detroit probably the only game this year as the favorite. And uh, we'll see, you know, how that game goes and how they come off that. And if they were able to beat Detroit, they'll come in on a winning streak. And, it just, you know, you never know in this game. And uh, Kind of hoping Detroit wins that game. Yeah, you've, you've talked about that a couple of times. Uh, somebody asked that question, would you would you rather have Detroit get a win before we get to that game in the final game of the year? I'd like to Detroit. I'd like Detroit to win every game they play up to our game. That, that will help us in the standings and it also get that, you know, that thing off their back where, uh, you know, they haven't won. So I'm I'm the biggest Detroit fan out there there is right now. Anything else, Cap? Anything in the world of college basketball? We've got about two minutes or so left here. No, I just hope that our students will show up Saturday. You know, uh, this team's a fun team to watch, man. They're really a fun team to watch. They're an unbelievable group of kids to coach. It's I, I can't tell you how much fun I'm having coaching them. Um, you know, the respect that they have, the, the love for our university. I mean, they, they truly, well, you heard DQ today. Yeah. They, they truly love Oakland University. They truly represent this university the way it's supposed to be represented. And maybe that's why we're winning too. You know, it's, they're very talented, but they're great kids. That, to be able to come back from what they did Thursday and, and do what they did on Saturdays, it's, it's such, such a big thing for us. And, and, you know, like I told them after the game, two years ago, you know, we were humming along, thought we were going to win the league and go to the NCAA tournament. And one of the greatest players ever played at Oakland missed a dunk that would have won a game with, you know, 10 seconds to go. And the other team went down and scored and beat us. And we All we had to do, we still had three home games left. All we had to do was win two, two of them and we still would have won the league. And one loss became two, two became three, and everything went bad. And We had that same chance to happen the other night and it didn't. And that's what I feel the best about all right, well, that'll wrap things up here on the Greg Campy Show. Just three regular season home games left, by the way. So make sure you make your way out there. Big thank you to DQ Cole for coming through. Uh, big thank you to everybody here at RJ's Pub. And all of you as well for another episode of the Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. Thanks for listening, everybody. Well, see you later.